In section 13.3, you will evaluate trigonometric functions of any angle. In our first example, we're going to let negative 4 and negative 3 be a point on the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position. We'll evaluate the six trigonometric functions of theta. So we'll graph our point on the coordinate plane in the third quadrant. Negative 4, negative 3 and we'll draw the terminal side of this angle theta through that point. The initial side, remember, is the positive x-axis. So we've rotated into the third quadrant with theta. To apply the trig definitions, trig functions, we need to form a right triangle, and that's going to be formed with the terminal side and the x-axis so that we use this acute angle, reference angle, theta prime, to apply the uh, definitions of trig functions to. So we need to label the legs and hypotenuse of this right triangle. Since we went left four units, this leg has a length of four and it's in the negative direction. And then we went down three units to form this leg, so it's down in the negative direction three units. Now to find the hypotenuse, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So that hypotenuse squared is going to equal the sum of the legs squared. So C is going to equal the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, and 4 squared, which is 16. So C is going to equal the square root of 25, or 5. That hypotenuse is always positive, and in this case it has length 5. So now we can find the sine of theta. It's equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or negative 3 fifths. We can find its reciprocal, the cosecant of theta. It's equal to hypotenuse over opposite, or negative 5 thirds. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 4 fifths. And the secant of theta is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent, negative 5 fourths. The tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, negative 3 over negative 4, which is positive 3 fourths, and its reciprocal, the cotangent of theta, would be adjacent over opposite, negative 4 over negative 3, which is positive 4 thirds. Okay, now we want to sketch the angle in problem 2, then find its reference angle. So to sketch 140 degrees, we're going to start on the positive x-axis and move in the positive direction 140 degrees. Now we're going to be short 40 degrees of that x-axis, and that's where we're going to find theta prime. So theta prime is going to equal 40 degrees. It's an acute angle that's formed with the terminal side and the x-axis. Okay, let's find uh, the reference angle, or theta prime, for 7 pi over 12. Well, we're going to start our rotation on the positive x-axis, and we're going to move in the positive direction. If we go halfway, we've gotten 1 pi, which is equal to 12 twelfths pi, and then from 0 radians, a full circle would be 2 pi, or 24 twelfths pi. So we're only going to rotate 7 twelfths pi to get to our terminal side. So we'll form a right triangle with the x-axis, and this acute angle between the terminal side and the x-axis is our theta prime. So theta prime, in this case, is going to equal 12 twelfths pi take away the 7 twelfths pi that we rotated. So theta prime is going to equal 5 twelfths pi. Okay, let's find the reference angle for negative 3 fourths pi. Here we're going in the negative direction from this positive x-axis from our initial side. And if we went halfway, we would go 1 pi 
or four fourths pi. And a full circle from zero radians would be two pi or eight fourths pi. So we're going to go only three fourths. So we're going to move into the third quadrant to find our terminal side. And then we'll draw our right triangle with the x-axis from that terminal side to the x-axis. And this acute angle that's formed is our theta prime. Now we went 3 fourths pi, so theta prime is going to equal 4 fourths pi, take away 3 fourths pi, or theta prime is going to equal 1 fourth pi. We want to evaluate the function on this page without using a calculator. So to evaluate the cosine of negative 225 degrees, we would want to graph that angle. And graphing, I would start on the positive x-axis, I'd rotate in the negative direction 180 degrees and 45 degrees more to rotate a full 225 degrees in the negative direction. Okay, now the terminal side, from the terminal side I'd want to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis because this is going to be our theta prime between the terminal side and the x-axis that we're going to use to find the cosine of theta. We need to label this triangle. Since we went 45 degrees past the x-axis, we went 180 degrees and 45 degrees more, we know that this triangle is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. Our reference angle or theta prime is 45 degrees. So we can label the sides of this special triangle 1, 1, the square root of 2. They're in that ratio. Only when we went left of the origin, that's a negative direction. So that leg is going to be negative. Up is a positive direction, so this leg stays positive. And the hypotenuse is always positive. So now we can apply our definition of cosine to that negative 225 degree angle. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 1 over the square root of 2. We need to rationalize that denominator. So we'll multiply by a form of 1, the square root of 2 over itself, and leave our answer, our ratio, as negative the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, let's try that again in problem 2, only with radians. So we're going to graph 5 pi over 3 radians. Here we're moving in the positive direction from the positive x-axis, so we're moving counterclockwise. And we, we're um, going to go halfway, which is 1 pi, or 3 thirds pi. And if we go a full circle from 0 radians, we would go 2 pi, which is going to be 6 thirds pi. So we're going to rotate 3 thirds and 2 thirds more, a total of 5 thirds. So our terminal side is going to end up in the fourth quadrant. And when we draw our perpendicular to the x-axis, we're going to find that what's left here for theta prime is theta prime is going to equal 1 third pi. But 180 degrees is what pi is equal to, and 180 degrees divided by 3 is equal to 60 degrees. So 1 third pi is equal to 60 degrees. So we have a special triangle again, 60, 30, 90 degree triangle. And the sides are in the ratio 1, 2, the square root of 3. Now right of the origin is a positive direction, so 1 stays positive. But down is a negative direction. So this leg of the length square root of 3 is going to be negative square root of 3. Hypotenuse is always positive. So we'll apply the definition of cotangent now to our reference angle for this theta, 5 thirds pi. And definition of cotangent is adjacent over opposite. 
So we've got 1 over negative the square root of 3 and rationalizing that denominator, our ratio is negative the square root of 3 over 3. Okay, here we're going to evaluate the six trigonometric functions of theta, and theta happens to be a special angle, just like our 45 degree, 30 degree, and 60 degree angles are special. 90 degrees is also special, because if we rotate 90 degrees from the positive x-axis, our terminal side is going to be straight up and down, lying on the y-axis, so that means the opposite side and the hypotenuse are in the ratio 1 to 1 and the adjacent side is 0 for our right triangle that's formed, our right triangle that we're going to apply the definitions of uh, trig functions to. So the sine of 90 degrees is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse or 1 over 1, 1. It's reciprocal, the cosecant of 90 degrees is equal to hypotenuse over opposite, so also 1 over 1, or 1. The cosine of 90 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, 0 over 1, so it's equal to 0, and its reciprocal, the secant of 90 degrees, is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent, which would be 1 over 0, and we know we can't divide by 0, so we say that the secant of 90 degrees is undefined. Okay, we need tangent of 90 degrees. That's opposite over adjacent, 1 over 0 again. So that's undefined. And it's reciprocal, the cotangent of 90 degrees is adjacent over opposite. 0 over 1 or 0. Okay, let's also find the six trigonometric functions of pi in problem 2 here. So when we rotate pi units, we've gone half a circle from the positive x-axis to our terminal side. So that means our terminal side is lying on the negative x-axis and they're in the ratio 1, 1, and the opposite side for pi is 0. Now, to the left of the origin is a negative direction, so our uh, adjacent side is going to be negative. The adjacent side is always lying on the x-axis. So when we apply the definitions now of our trig functions, the sine of pi is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, 0 over 1, or 0, it's reciprocal, the cosecant of pi is equal to hypotenuse over opposite, 1 over 0, so that's undefined, we can't divide by 0. Okay, see, uh, cosine next, cosine of pi is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's negative 1 over 1, or negative 1. It's reciprocal, the secant of pi is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent, 1 over negative 1, so also negative 1. And the tangent of pi is going to be opposite over adjacent, 0 over negative 1, which is 0. And the last function, cotangent of, the, of pi, is going to equal adjacent over opposite, or negative 1 over 0, and we can't divide by 0, so this is undefined. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 9 odd on pages 867 and 869 of your textbook.